Hey everyone, Marathon Hurdler here, back with some more Final Fantasy. Last time, we restored the last crystal, and off screen, I've made some preparations before we go into the final dungeon of the game. First, you can see that I've leveled everyone up to level 42. In order to get the last tier of spells, or the last level of spells, which I have for Pinello and Palom now, you need to get to level 39. And the only reason I went to level 42 was, well, I had a little extra time, so I figured, why not gain an extra level or so? Um, every level will help moving forward, so yeah. Um, in terms of the spells that I picked up, as you can see, I've got Full Life and Holy and Null All for Pinello, and all those will be pretty useful. Holy will help us do some extra damage because Pinello doesn't really have any magic attacks beyond Diaja, and Full Life will be useful in case someone gets knocked out and we can heal them without using Phoenix Downs, and Null All will obviously be useful against any elemental attacks there. And, as for Palum, Flare is the only super useful spell that you can get at the level 8, or from the level 8 spells. Warp will be useful when you're in a dungeon and you need to get out of one, but beyond that, I don't really use it in terms of actual battle that much. And same thing with Kill, I don't really use it that much in battle, but it's there. So yeah, here we are at the Chaos Shrine, and this is where we need to go to finally wrap up the game. Now the first thing you'll see when you come in here is... There's a little cutscene with this hooded figure who you may have remembered, or you may remember from Cornelia, and he walks all the way back to this dungeon and opens up a new passageway for us. And I believe this is how you access the Labyrinth of Time, which obviously is something I won't be doing today, but just remember that for later. But in order to continue with the plot, what we need to do is just walk up to where we fought Garland before, and hit X when you get to this little sphere thing and yeah then all the crystals will start to shine and what do you know it's a uh, time warp now I know I haven't done a great job of showing off all of the NPCs in this game but it's not entirely clear to me how I don't think they ever mentioned directly in the game be it like beforehand that you were gonna have to travel back in time to save the world maybe they did and I just kind of missed that part but anyway now I think you can t step on that that war panel to get out of here if you need to we're gonna be fine we don't need to and this actually is not the worst place to do some level grinding if you need to do that I did all of my level grinding at um back at the uh flying fortress which and in particular I fought a lot of enemies where I fought Tiamat now you can fight some pretty powerful enemies there including one of the most powerful enemies in the game the war mech which I didn't show up on screen, but it's there, and if you do fight against him, if you decide to, gr to do some level grinding there and you run into him, basically just treat him as if he's a boss, cast Proterra and all that on your party, haste and temper on your damage dealers, and then just go to town. He's not that hard to beat, even at like level 37, 38. So, um, that's where I fought, and you can also get like 8,000 points of experience from him every battle, so that's pretty pretty useful so um, that's basically what I did and but if you wanted to grind somewhere else this is also not the worst place to grind just because well the experience you'll get here is pretty high so yeah I would consider that and obviously you can always just leave by using the warp spell which I now which I've picked up and I think that's basically everything from the preparations perspective I mean I did pick up some uh, I picked up some items like I went ahead and stocked up on all of my items off screen, so I got 100 ethers and all that. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically it. Um, and yeah, most of the enemies here are going to be pretty easy to defeat. For the most part, you don't even need to use Flare. I did in that battle, obviously, but I don't think it's something that you really need to do unless you just want to. And I'm going the wrong way um, here, so... Yeah, that's not a whole lot to wrap up here. I mean, this game is fairly short. And like I was saying before, the experience here is really good. The green dragons, I think, give you about a thousand experience uh, per battle there. And um, you can run into groups of up to four of them. So, yeah, it's a quick way to get some experience. And, prob and probably faster overall than... Um, fighting at the Flying Fortress, but 
you know, I wanted to, I didn't want to show off any of the cutscenes or anything and get in here first, so I decided to wait on that until this episode. And obviously we have a new enemy here, the Death Eye, who is apparently fairly resistant to physical attacks. I probably should have used player on him or something, but it's okay. We'll figure it out. And, well, stop didn't do much to us there. Let's go ahead. We'll go, I'll go ahead and show off my new spells here. I think I've already I've already shown off Flare on screen, but haven't shown off Holy yet. And I won't get a chance to, because he's dead. Simple enough. Yeah, that, not very useful, but, in terms of experience, but what can you do? Now, I'm not sure if that's a forced encounter. I can never figure out in this place. But yeah, I can never figure out in this place which, which uh, encounters are forest in which ones aren't or are not um, because you run into like these really rare enemies just like randomly or seemingly rare enemies at like spots like right in front of a door or whatnot but at the same time the encounter rate is so high that it's like whatever anyway I was kind of talking through that but basically what you do is you walk to the panel interact with it and then they start playing the loot and from there you can move on so yeah, now so you I mean you need the loot to be able to get past this point, but I don't think you can even I don't know if you can even get here without having the loot, so I don't know if that's if that's really saying anything. And I don't think I've shown off these guys, or at least I don't remember showing these guys off before. So let's go ahead and use some of our best stuff here. I'll have a pal and use um, a healing staff on everyone. Now these guys are basically the same as everyone else we fought to this point. I mean, most of them can be killed in one shot by our best, by our physical attacks. You could also be using um, Faraga or Flare on these guys, but, you know, I want to mix it up a little bit. I mean, I only show off a couple battles per area and don't want to use the exact same spell every single time. And, well, unfortunately we weren't able to completely finish him off there. It looks like we were just off by a little bit, but that's okay. We'll just use our healing items and have our two uh, melee fighters go after them. And really for the most part you can get through most of the battles using this strategy, so having your two physical attackers, assuming you just have two, um, use their attacks while the other two use healing items like healing staff, healing helm, etc. And that's a good way to conserve MP, although really for the most part you shouldn't need to. I would imagine you should be in decent shape without needing, needing to do that, but in case you know, there you have it. And for the most part, this dungeon is pretty straightforward. I mean, it's big, so it's easy to kind of get lost because it's not always clear what path you're supposed to follow. But for the most I mean, there's no puzzles really to figure out. It's just a bunch of walking around and fighting random encounters. And for the most part, you're just going to be fighting a lot of dragon enemies. So, I mean... They use, I mean, they all have pretty strong physical attacks and pretty nasty group attacks, but for the most part, you should be okay. And honestly, against a lot of these enemies, I think even the Flare is overkill. I mean, generally speaking, you can get by with just using, like, uh, with the, uh, tier 3 spells, or, or, like, all these random encounters are throwing off my rhythm here. So you can get by most, for the most part, using Faraga, Blazaga, and Thundaga, um, if you want to. So like, uh, Flare is often overkill, but that's okay. Alright. Yeah, so, once you get to the stairs there, you run into, well, Lich, again, and once again, the... Random encounters kind of threw up my rhythm there because I thought that I was fighting Lich a second ago, but no. And this is actually Lich. So let's go ahead and set up our defense. I don't want no all, actually. I want. Let's see. No frost. There we go. And. Wow, well, you used the giant gloves on yourself. So these battles are not going to be exactly the same as they were the first time around. Uh, these are all like stepped up versions of. They're former, well, these guys basically. They have more HP, uh, better stats, etc. So, 
I mean, but for the most part, the strategy in approaching these guys is basically the same. You want to boost one of your, you want to boost your physical attacker there, and oh, well, as you can see here, definitely not the same thing. He's coming right after us with uh, the flare there. So let's see, how do I want to do this? Well, I think we can focus. I think we can continue to um, continue to go about our plan. I don't think that messes things up too much. Let's see. Giant gloves are a little bit lower. We do want to heal up, though. Hey, we don't want to repeat what happened in the, lo in the last battle there. So let's go ahead and get haste on Zidane there while Ramza attacks and everyone buffs and heals. But yeah, for the most part, it's not going to be too difficult. I mean, if this guy is really difficult for you, then you might need to do some more level grinding. But for the most part, he shouldn't be that bad. He just has more HP and he has some slightly more powerful spells. And I'm going to go ahead and put Proterra on myself. I think that should be fine. And then we'll have him cast Temper on Zidane. And we should be in good shape from here. Yeah, we should only need about one more attack to finish him off. Assuming no one gets paralyzed. And of course, the one person I don't want to get paralyzed gets paralyzed. But that's okay. Because I think we should be able to still finish him off in the next turn. Let's see... Yeah, let's go ahead and use Holy. Let's just try to finish him off in this turn. And I think that should be everything about this guy. I mean, he might have some other attacks that he can use against us. But nothing particularly deadly. And that was awful. Wow. Yeah, it's about this point in the game where magic isn't quite as useful. I mean, I guess it's been true for a little bit in terms of boss battles, but yeah, you're not you're not doing much with uh, magic attacks, unfortunately, at this point in the game. Except for in like random battles. Random battles, magic is obviously still gonna magic is still gonna be useful, but just not so much in random battles. Anyway. Now we are in I guess the second half of the dungeon here, so And what I mean by the second half, and I don't know if I've shown these guys off. I've shown up someone like this, but I don't know if I've shown these guys off. So I'll show this battle off. But what I was saying a second ago is that this, we're basically in the second half of this dungeon now. What I mean by that is the first half up to Lich was, there were like three floors, maybe four different floors there. And that you were just kind of rotating between those back and forth as you were moving around. And now we're in a second self-contained portion of the dungeon. We'll be moving back and forth between different floors, but it's all basically self-contained, so... ...all there. And, yeah, my guys are a little bit off in terms of the levels because Zidane got stoned in some random battle here, and then, um... But that's okay. I mean, in the long run, it'll all even out anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm pretty sure I can't go through here yet. We're going to have to go the long way, unfortunately. And I mean the semi-long way. So one other thing I should point out, or one thing I should mention about the magic is... Magic isn't completely useless at this point in the game. In fact, it's still pretty useful, especially in random battles. But what I meant is that... Magic won't be very useful against bosses. And against bosses, you're basically going to be using magic primarily for buffing and healing as opposed to doing damage, which is fine. Uh, the Black Mage is still pretty useful, though, just because he can, um, because in regular battles, he's going to be able to do far more damage than anyone else. So just keep that in mind. And okay, so eventually we're going to want to head north there, but not right now. Instead, we're going to head south to pick up some treasure. We get another Protect Ring, which, again, we've already purchased all of those. But if for some reason you didn't buy them, well, now you can get one. And I'm probably not going to show off my backtracking here just because you can see it's a long path. So just kind of keep, just pay attention to where we, where I'm walking here. And once I get the next treasure, I'll probably just meet you back where the Protect Ring was. Because again, this is a not long, narrow pathway. With nothing 
with nothing of particular interest on it, so... But, at the end, we get the Sassica's Blade, which we already have, so not super useful, but it's there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to meet you back where I got the Protect Ring, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So now what we want to do is head back to this intersection here, and this time we're going to go right and pick up some more treasure. The first one we want to get, and the first treasure we want is right here. And we get another Protect Cloak, which... I'm going to give to, well, I can't give it to Rams. I'm going to give it to Pal there. That's what I meant. And then one more treasure, which is going to be at the end of a another semi-long and narrow pathway here, but not quite as long as the last one we dealt with. And so the treasure we want to get is right here, and it's a Mega Elixir, so pretty nice. Now I think in an earlier version of the game, that wasn't a Mega Elixir. Yeah, I think in the Origins game, which is the one that I, the version I originally played, I think that was some Gil there, not a Mega Elixir, which I suppose makes sense. I'm not even sure if they had an Elixir item in the original, or in the Origins version, because you didn't really have MP then. But anyway, now that we've got all the treasure, now that we've got the treasure, we want to progress to the next floor. Well, to do that, we're going to need to walk up this path, but I actually need to take a quick pause break before we move on, so I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now let's go ahead and head to, or head to the next area, but to do that, we're going to need to defeat Merilith once again. So, same thing as with Lich. Um, I mean, she's not going to be as easy as she was the first time, but she won't be particularly difficult either. So let's go ahead and start setting up our defenses and our offense and go from there. And that's not the right item, we're looking for the giant scrubs. I should probably just sort these items in a way that makes more sense long term, but eh, it's fine. And as you can see, uh, she does hit pretty hard. I should probably stop focusing on using the null spells and focus on setting up my physical defense first, but eh, what can you do, right? For the most part, we should still be okay, though. I don't think she'll be able to do much to finish us off here. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and use Proterra here, and hold on, let's, am I doing this right? I want to use Giant's Gloves with, where are they? There we go. And then I'm going to have you use Proterra. Have you attack, and then haste. As long as she doesn't, of course, use a physical attack on Ramza, which she did, but somehow we managed to survive. Wow, that was close. Definitely more risky than I needed to be there, but... At least we got Proteo on everyone, and now I'll, I can just use Kiraja on Ramza, and that should take care of him. And then we'll use Temper on Zidane as well. Now hopefully... Yeah, we're good. I was going to say, hopefully we can get our heal off before then, but nope, that wasn't going to happen. Although for some reason, um, well, Penelope just always seems to be behind when it comes to her speed. Like, she never seems to heal as quickly as I would like. Let's actually, let's use Invisra instead. And then, but she should, she, and she should go down this turn, so I'm not too worried about it, but, um... Yeah, for some reason, of course, now Penella gets her buff off. As soon as I'm complaining about her being a little slow, she gets it off in time. But anyway, yeah, Merilith's not too hard. I mean, really, all she's got is her physical attacks. There. I'm, now, I thought that she could use some high-level spells as well, but maybe not. Well, anyway, the gill we get for beating her is basically nothing, but that's fine. So, now we are in the next floor of the Chaos Shrine, and there's no treasure here, although there are a lot of random rooms that you can walk into. I'm not going to want to walk into any of them because, well, there's nothing to pick up. Instead, we're just going to want to head straight to the exit, which can be found... Um, well, first we got to go through... It doesn't matter which door I think you go through here, but... So you can either go to the right or the left here. 
you just don't want to go to any of the rooms at the top because there's nothing in there. And what we want to do is go around and then go to the north. And then that's going to allow us to go down that middle path you can kind of see to the left there. And that's how we're going to get to our, our next destination. And given the order of events here, I'm sure you can imagine who we're going to be fighting next. Now before I move on too much further down this path, I want to use a couple of ethers. Not that I'm going to need them, but I just like to have my MP a little bit higher whenever I get ready to run into a boss fight. Spoiler alert, there's going to be a boss fight coming up pretty shortly. And by shortly, I mean right now. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this going again. Having learned my mistakes from my mistakes the first two times, I'm just going to go ahead and use um, Proterra the first turn. Now, of course, watch him go ahead and use, like, have him watch him use um, magic on the first turn, but eh, that's what we're going to go with anyway. Yeah, of course, it was a... Uh, well, I guess it wasn't a magic attack, but whatever. Now, I'm not too worried about blind right now. We can get rid of that pretty easily when the time comes. At least it wasn't Rams of who was affected, so I'm not too concerned about that. Now, I'm going to... I can do. I can take care of that this turn, but I'm going to have Zidane still use, still use the giant gloves on himself. And I'll just use blind uh, if I can find it. There we go. To get rid of that. And then you can attack, and then we'll use Haste on Ramza there. But yeah, having the Proterra up makes a big difference, because that would have done a lot more damage had it not been for um, Proterra. And really, I could have, I could probably have prioritized um, Invisra, but still, I didn't want to risk it, because I don't think... Pen Penel is not fast enough, generally speaking, with her magic to... For that to be effective. An effective strategy, that is. Now, after this turn, I'm probably going to need to go ahead and heal because he seems to be picking on Penelope a little bit, but unlike Gramza, she can actually take the hits a little bit more. And as I mentioned much earlier, this is kind of where you see uh, Ram or your your monks start to take off. I mean, the number of hits that he gets is are pretty high, and it really... The, di the difference in damage is starting to become more apparent as we go along here. Now let's use let's use temper again. Come on, don't don't get don't get Ramza. All right, we're good then. As long as he doesn't get Ramza, we're in good shape. And yeah, I think that's just about everything. I mean, most of these bosses they hit a little bit harder, but when it comes to like the actual strategy, it's all basically the same thing. Yeah, and you can get rid of most of these guys in three turns and. I suppose if I were really aggressive, I could possibly get rid of them even faster, but yeah, you don't need much more than three or four turns to get rid of these guys, and yeah, you'll be in good shape. All right, so we are getting closer. Fortunately, this floor is going to be a little bit long because, well, there is one more treasure we can get, but it's kind of out of the way, unfortunately, in terms of where we need to go. So I'm going to... First, go get the treasure, and then what I'll probably do is just meet you back at the entrance to this floor, and then we'll go get the we'll go we'll go where we need to go from there. But yeah, the treasure we want is going to be in this room, and it's the Mazamune. Mazamune, Mazamune. I'm always terrible pronouncing these, but best weapon that we can get for is the down there, the Mazamune. And so what I'm going to do is just um. Meet you back at the entrance to this floor. Okay, I'm back. Now what we're going to do to get out of here is make our way to the... We're going to want to head east here. And our next boss battle should be right here. Yep, and it's, well, not surprisingly, Tiamat. And, as always, not much has changed here in terms of our strategy. Let's buff up Ramza and get our defenses up at the same time here. And from there, we'll just kind of take things as they go. We are so close to the end, but of course, gotta have the boss gauntlet. This is, I guess, the original boss gauntlet, really, if you think about it. But, and of course, you know, first thing he's gonna do is use Thunderbolt. Probably should've used Null Shock, but 
Eh, didn't hit me that hard. We'll be okay. But I probably will use um, No Shock in the next turn just to be safe since we already have Proterra up. And we'll use. Go ahead and buff up Zidane as always. I know this isn't particularly exciting. I mean, this is basically the same thing over and over again, but. Well, this is basically the attack pattern for the most part at this point in the game. Um, make sure Ramza gets buffed up first, and then from there, just try to stay, keep yourselves healed up and go all out from there. Now, Tiamat, I guess, as you as you can see, his physical defenses are much higher than all the rest of the bosses, but that was true when you fought him the first time, so I mean, I still think this is probably the most efficient way to go about things, but at the same time, well, that's fun. But uh, at the same time, you know, not much you can, I don't know. If you want to use magic, go ahead, but I think that using physical attacks are still my preferred method of doing things. But yeah, not much else to say. I mean, he has some physical attacks which are, which can be deadly, but for the most part, you shouldn't have any problem with that. Um, let's get Invisrob. And just keep casting Temper with your Black Mage. I think that's going to be the best way to get your damage up. And as you can see, your Rams is up to doing um, a thousand plus points of damage, so we'll be in good shape. And the Mazumoon really does a lot for us in terms of boosting our attack. Um, yeah, because before, Zidane was starting to lag a little bit in, in, in attack power, and now he should be okay for the most part. Come on, just need to survive this hit? Alright, we should be good now. I think... Oh, I didn't mean to use Halara, I meant to use Heliga, but, eh. But we should be good now, he should be done this turn, and he is. Alright, so now we only have one boss left to go. I wonder who it could be. The game doesn't really, does the game give us any indication as, who, as to who it is? I really should talk to the NPCs more often in these games. But, it's a little too late for me to be worrying about talking to NPCs now, because, well, we're or of the Chaos Shrine, and there's a lot that you can see here, but nothing to actually pick up, so let's just head straight for the final confrontation. Before we go in there, let's go ahead and use up all the others we have and our healing items to get ourselves up to full health. Because, well, this is the final battle. There's no reason not to be at full health. So let's use those ethers. I know you don't want to see this on screen, perhaps, but eh quick enough. Alright, and what do you know? It's Garland himself. I mean, you couldn't tell just by seeing the horns. Yes, but why are you here 2,000 years in the past? Yeah, so... Yeah. The fiends apparently sent him back in time why the fiends were sending him back in time, I do not know. But then he sent the fiends back to the future. And then, so it becomes like this, yeah, it's basically a time loop. I don't quite know how this works. But, whatever. Not too worried about it. And all of a sudden he becomes chaos. So I'm guessing this must be like the, we're fighting him in the first loop maybe? I, I don't know what's going on there, but anyway, it's final boss time. And, well, the strategy here isn't going to be that much different than what we've done before. So, we do get a little bit of a different final boss theme. I don't know if the original, I don't think the original versions... I mean, Origins did, but I don't think the NES version had a different boss battle theme here. Or I can't remember anyway. I'm pretty sure it didn't. But that's beyond the point. This guy can hit pretty hard, so we're going to want to keep our defenses up at all times and our health up. But not much we can do about it first turn. We just want to go ahead and get Proterra up, and then we'll start worrying about getting the Null stuff up as well. And at some point, you might need to use Palm to help out with the healing. But for now, I wanted to at least get Ramza up to up to snuff there. So let's. I'm just gonna focus on Ramza for a little bit and have Palm do a little extra healing on the side here. I don't know if this is necessary, but um, 
Yeah. I think, yeah, I'm not too worried about... I don't think we're too... Well, of course, as soon as I started saying, I think we're going to be okay. Um, it turns out that, no, we actually are not okay. But what I was going to say is, I don't know if you need to play it as conservatively as I'm playing it. And I can't say I'm playing it too conservatively because I'm using a healing staff. But, um, nonetheless, I still think that we should be okay here. I mean, at this point, Ramza can do enough damage by himself to take this guy on. So that's why I'm... Not, I'm okay playing it a little bit conservatively here. Now let's go ahead and get um, some curtain items up. That's not good. I have a feeling Palum is about to die here. Come on, Palum. Yep, he's dead. Fun. That's fun. And why in the world was I setting casting temper on on uh, Palum? That makes no sense little of what I'm doing right now makes sense, so... Wouldn't be a Marathon Hurdler episode without me doing something stupid. Alright, so let's just go ahead and start trying to get our guys buffed, I mean, healed up here. And why I'm attacking with Zidane, I am just not focused right now. I gotta get back in the game. Gotta get focused here. Alright, so let's get Temper on Ramza again. Let's use Hila... Hilaga. And then, let's have you use a white robe to get Invisra on everyone again, including yourself. Where is it? Right there. Alright, I'm not worried about that. I mean, even if that had hit me, I wouldn't be worried about that, because I'm not really using Zidane as my primary form of attack here. Alright, now I think we should be okay. There we go. Now we should be good. So let's get Temper. We'll just keep stacking Temper on Ramza. We'll have uh, Pinello continue to heal. We'll have you attack. And then let's use the White Robe one more time. And then we should be in good shape. Well, I guess I could have used... Uh, what I could have done is I could have used some of those curtain items. But I think this is the better way to go. Just to help make sure we're protected against his physical attacks there. And we should be able to finish him off pretty shortly here. I mean, with how much damage Ram Rams is doing, I can't imagine he's going to be able to stand up too much longer. I mean, that's the nice thing about temper. It does stack, so in a situation like this, there's really no reason to keep, not to keep using it. And I'm just going to keep using Heliga to keep my health up, and then... Let's go ahead and use a... Oh, well, yeah, let's use, let's use a curtain item. Which one do I want to use, though? Let's maybe use a white, uh... Yeah, let's try the blue curtain again. And of course, I'm not going to get it off in time. Of course. Oh, well. We'll be okay. He should be about dead by now. Nope. Okay. Or not. Oh, yeah, I forgot. They... That's why. Um, in this version, and I think in the Game Boy Advance version... They actually increase its HP by quite a lot, because I think before, if you set it up right, you could actually one-shot this guy with a uh, well-buffed monk or wizard. Not wizard, master. But obviously that's no longer going to be the case. But let's go ahead and use more curtain items, just in case he decides to use any of those attacks on us again. Because I think we're going to be in this for a little bit longer, unfortunately. So having as many curtain items set up as possible is going to be a good thing for us long term. Alright, so... Even so, I think... Well, I think we might have maxed out our temper on him, perhaps. Because it seems like his damage is plateauing a bit. But even so, we're going to use it at least one more time here. And then let's use one more curtain item. Yeah, white curtain. To make sure our magic defense is completely set there. And then from here, maybe we'll start buffing up Zidane, and it looks like we haven't reached our cap for temper yet. So, maybe I'll just double temper Rams and now. I'm going to temper him. I don't really want to spend the time trying to buff up the rest of my part, or buff up Zidane now. So yeah, we'll use double temper on Ramza, and hopefully we'll be able to finish him off soon. Or not. And he keeps going after Zidane. I'm going to probably need to use 
Kiraja on him or something. Um, because I, I don't want him to go down here. Let's see. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and use Kiraja on... On uh, Zidane there. And of course he's healing himself now. Because why not? Jeez. Okay. That's a lot of healing, unfortunately. But... And why am I casting... Why do I keep casting Temper on Palum? I really have got to pay better attention. Yeah, I only want to be casting Temper on Ramza, not Palum. And of course he's using Haste on himself now. I might need to slow him down. I don't want him... Uh, uh, an attack with Haste could actually do some serious damage, particularly to Palum, so... I need to prevent him from doing that. But yeah, the damage you can do with uh, a well-buffed monk is pretty ridiculous, if you, as you can kind of see here. And we're starting to run a little bit low on MP for... We're starting to run a little low on MP, so I need to be more cautious of that. There we go, they're slow. We should be okay using that. And I'm actually not that worried about Cyclone. I mean, it's going to do some damage to all of us, but it's better than him just focusing on one character with his physical attacks. I think we should be able to... Mitigate all of the damage here with... Yeah, we should be able to mitigate the damage there with, um... Kilara. But, we won't need to, because Chaos is... Finally gone. Yeah, he's pretty tough. I mean... That's why I did a little bit of level grinding off-screen, I think. I mean, I've seen recommendations to have him up to... Level... Have your party up to level 50. I don't think level 50 is necessary, but... Yeah, you want to be at least around in the mid-40s, I would say. But, we have defeated Garland slash Chaos, and, well, the world is saved. And, yeah, we get a little epilogue here. The time loop was severed at last. Well, you know, the thing is, it's hard for me to kind of really think about the this time loop because they brought it up in the last, like, hour of the game and well it's hard to say how many times we've actually been through that time loop it's not like chrono trigger where it's like the whole thing is like built up as this big time story and you have to break this uh terrible event from happening in the future but yeah whatever it's the first final fantasy one of the first role-playing games on a console made so you know one of the first major rpgs that is so, you know, you can give him a little bit of slack here. Although this epilogue is moving kind of slow from my... A mere trick of fate. That sounds depressing. Like, if, if, if it's the case that the world can be destroyed just by, by mere fate, that would be pretty depressing. Now, see, this is where I... So, I mean, I guess they're trying to explain where the fiends came from. But, I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to be too critical of this game because... You know, again, it's just a, it's just old-school role-playing game. But, yeah. It's just so much exposition without any real explanation as to why this happened. Or they don't really show us this happening. It's just, hey, here are the fiends. And oh, by the way, they just happened to show up. And they were like from 2,000 years ago. But now you've killed them, so now they're done. You know, it just seems... That falls a little bit flat, I have to be honest. I'm not sure how, how convinced I am by that. But it is all in the past. Literally, it's all in the past. And now the... Warriors can go back to the future where everything will be fine now. And you know, one thing that I have to say about this that um, I wish they would have done a better job with, because I know some of the Final Fantasies did this, is with the crystals like showing off like their actual impact on the world. You know? Um, like, the Earth Crystal, like without the Earth Crystal, like are there more earthquakes happening? Or like, 
as a water dry like drying up or something like they kind of talk about it a little bit but not that much but yeah and I think that's a question that we all have but of course no one's gonna answer answer that for us But Garland is waiting for us in the future, and apparently he won't be evil then. And of course, no one can tell us when this time loop started, not even the developers themselves, but eh, that's okay, I guess. I am kind of over this epilogue, though, I have to be honest. Yeah, I am I'm really over this epilogue now. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to come up with things to say, but, like, it is hard. Well, I guess I can talk about what's going on next. I figured there were going to be some long credits after this. And I wanted to kind of wait until the credits showed up before I started talking about what's coming next. But I can start talking about that now. Um, obviously, this is the finale of the storyline, but it is not the last episode that I will be recording. Obviously, there's a lot of side content I want to show off. But the way I kind of figured it is, I'm going to need to do a lot of grinding anyway to get to a point where I can take on those side dungeons and once I finish all of them I'll be at a much higher level. So I wanted to show off beating Chaos at a fairly reasonable level. I still was probably a little bit over leveled but I didn't want to take on Chaos at like level 80, level 90 or something ridiculous and then because then it just doesn't have much strategy. There's not much strategy to show off there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go do some grinding off screen um, using the backup save file I made halfway through the Chaos dungeon. I'll probably get up to like level 45, somewhere between 45 and 50, and then the next episode will be moving on from there. And I'm not sure how I want to set up those episodes yet. I'm one mega episode per dungeon. That's kind of what I'm thinking I might do, but I'll need to test that out and see if that if that works. Because you know I don't mind having episodes a little bit longer, but I also don't want to have my episodes be like like an hour long, hour an hour and a half long a piece. So. I'm either going to show off each dungeon as one episode, or I'm going to do like the dungeon portion in like half an episode and then show off like the optional bosses in each dungeon in another episode or something like that. But I'll do some testing and then I'll figure that out. In the meantime, I'll continue recording my other projects, Arc the Lad and Crimson Gem Saga, and I'll be uploading those videos on the regular scheduled dates. And then we'll go from there. I don't think I'll show off the Chaos Shrine again with like my more powerful characters because what's the point i mean it would just be me destroying them much more quickly and i just don't really see the benefit in that um so i think that's all in terms of what's happening next as far as my thoughts about this game i mean like i said before with final fantasy 8 it's hard to do reviews of games like this because they're so old and it's kind of hard to say it's hard to compare it to where games are now I mean, obviously this was very uh, this was I guess paradigm shifting in a way, in the sense that it basically saved Squaresoft and um, birthed the Final Fantasy series and kind of was central to the development of the modern JRPG. But at the same time, obviously a lot of games, games like this don't age particularly well. I mean, in some ways, the game still looks fine. I mean, the graphics for a PSP game are still top notch and with the sprites there, it's all very good. The music for the most part is good, although Obviously, a lot of the dungeons repeat themselves, but there are several dungeons that have really, really good music. I loved the Chaos Dungeon. I love Flying Fortress. I mean, and you'll see with some of the remixes of the boss themes that we're going to see later, they really did the music pretty well here. It's not the most epic soundtrack ever, but it's still enjoyable. Um, the big thing, obviously, is the gameplay and the storyline. There is no storyline to be, I mean, no real storyline here that keeps you engaged. The gameplay is still pretty solid, I think. I mean, um, it's a little bit easier here. Not a little bit. It's much easier here than in Origins because you can just use your best spells over and over again. And either are like 150 bucks a piece. And what's weird is this game came out after like the PSP game came out like well after obviously games like Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 9, and 10 where ethers weren't cheap and I mean obviously Final Fantasy X you could just use I mean Final Fantasy X is kind of a weird exception because you could just heal up at save points anyway same thing with like Final Fantasy XII 
But even so, it's I'm surprised that they didn't make either slightly more expensive in this game because you get so much money that you can literally just spam your best magic attacks over and over again. I mean, I played it really conservatively and didn't really use my magic attacks that much in the Chaos Dungeon or Tower or whatever. Like, I mean, I only used like, what, 25 of my ethers? I could have gone, really gone all out probably in every battle and one shot most of the random battles and it would have been fine. So, I mean, it's much easier. Still, I do like the, that there, it is more difficult than a lot of... It's still more difficult than many JRPGs, relatively speaking. It's certainly harder than Final Fantasy VIII was, at least once you figured out how to kind of manipulate Final Fantasy VIII a bit. Um, there is a bit of strategy involved, and I do like having characters in specific roles. I like having, like, my Black Mage and my Ninja and my White Mage and whatnot, as opposed to, like, Final Fantasy VIII, where it's just anyone can be anything. I mean, not that I mind the customization aspect, but, you know, if you're going to do the customization aspect, you really need to... It's still good to have each player have, like, kind of their own specific role, and maybe they can play a couple different styles, but, like, not everyone being basically interchangeable with one another, um, which is kind of what happened with Final Fantasy a little bit there. But, yeah, I mean, Final Fantasy, it's... Again, it's hard to review simply because, for me personally, I don't have the same nostalgia as a lot of people do with this game because... I didn't play this game until Origins, and I think I've mentioned that a few times in this playthrough. The first role-playing game I ever played was actually Final Fantasy VII, so like, if there's nostalgia for me, that's really where it's at. And when I came to Origins, I had already played like Final Fantasy VII through what at that point, twelve at that point. Yeah, I think I'd already played Final Fantasy VII through twelve plus Xeno Gears and Xeno Saga and like um, Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, the Saga games, Saga Frontier One and Two. Um, Tactics Ogre. I mean, like there, there was a, a lot of games that I already played. So coming back to this, it was like, you know, the gameplay was good, but it was like everything else. I was kind of like, eh, you know. And as you can kind of see, I'm not always the best about talking to NPCs, and so that was for me part of the part of it as well. Is like, um, I don't always talk to NPCs. I'm not great about it, but I'm more likely to do so when I think the NPCs are interesting. And in this game, the NPCs just don't have much to say. So, I don't know. I mean, whether or not... I mean, it's hard to say whether or not I would recommend this game for other people. I mean, obviously, I shouldn't play a game that I wouldn't recommend to, to others. But um, I think if, you, if you're if you a Final Fantasy junkie or if you're an RPG junkie and you just really want to play games for the nostalgia and whatnot, this is definitely a game to play. If you're playing it on its merits alone, this game probably falls a little bit lower on the list. Although it's well made enough and I think there's enough there to to play it but if you're if you're coming from like let's say playing final fantasy 9 or like 10 hd remake or something and you're like all right i want to play something else this would be a very stark contrast and i think part of it as well and i didn't talk about this earlier is the encounter rate i mean you know i came into this obviously having just played final fantasy 8 where i had encountered none a lot and i'm currently playing crimson gem saga and arc the lad where you know, there are no random encounters. You can kind of control to some extent when you fight. So, playing Final Fantasy 1, where there were times where I was running into battles every other step, it's definitely a stark contrast. And that's something that you have to get used to. But, if you can get past that, I think this is still a game that's worthwhile to play. And I think, especially for people who've played Final Fantasy, the extra dungeons um, bring some extra content that you'll see, which is going to be worth it, but... Yeah, I mean, it's a solid game. You can get it for pretty cheap. I lost, I had lost my Final Fantasy before, so I ended up buying a new copy before I did my test run and played through this. And I got it for like 10 bucks on Amazon, so like, and that's the other thing. With games like this, and even like Ark the Lad, like, would I buy them if they were 60 bucks? No, probably not. I mean, there's just not, it's not exciting enough. There's not enough storyline and other things there to kind of keep me engaged. But for 10 bucks, I mean, you, it's, you're you getting like, what, 20, 30 hours of content here, depending on how far you push it, maybe even 40, for like 10 bucks. You can't really beat that. So, yeah, I don't really have a number for this game. I don't know what I would give it. I mean, maybe when I play some newer games, I'll have a more formal review system. But right now, I don't really have much to say there. So, I think that's really about it. Now I'm just kind of waiting for these credits to finish rolling here and then we'll kind of wrap things up um 
I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to add in here before these credits finish rolling. So one thing I am thinking about doing, um, and this is one other thing with this Final Fantasy series, is that um, you can kind of see the progression as you go through the series. And I'm thinking about playing a couple of the games in a row here, so I'm thinking about doing Final Fantasy 2 next, once I finish this, and then maybe Final Fantasy 3 as well. And you can kind of see where they're tweaking the system a little bit and adding more to it and whatnot, which is good. Um, obviously, Final Fantasy 2 is kind of a weird game, but... You know, you could, I don't know, this game has nostalgia simply because you can kind of see where the series grew from here. Um, but, yeah, that's, I don't know, it, it's fine. I mean, I, I'm rambling here at this point, but like, you can see where the series goes from here. So it's kind of interesting to play it just because you can kind of see the roots. But I wouldn't necessarily play this game if you have the GBA version or whatnot, but... That's really all there is to this. I mean, this playthrough has been pretty short, but it's not over yet. There's a lot I want to show off, and I'm still very excited about it. Don't let my tepid review fool you. I am excited about showing off what's next, but I will be taking a few days off probably from recording Final Fantasy 1 and focus on my other games as I do a little bit of level grinding and get ready there. Um, so yeah, when I come back, you guys will be seeing me playing these extra dungeons. And until then, this has been Marathon Hurdler. I want to thank you as always for checking out my videos and hopefully I'll see you next time. Um, I wasn't expecting this to show up here. So you can make a save game with the bestiary. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I don't think you can start off the game again with like all your stats, obviously, which is why I'm going to have to go back to a file before I took on chaos to, um, to do this. But anyway, now I'm actually done here. Uh, so, until next time, this has been Marathon Hurdler. I want to thank you as always for checking out my videos, and hopefully I'll see you next time.